Hey young people, I'm going to talk about uh, the hiring process. I've been wanting to do this video for a while. Uh, shit, it's like 95 degrees outside, so I'm going to do it inside. It's even warm in here. Start my YouTube probation timer. Okay, so let's talk about um, getting hired as a cop. What the process is and how it goes. If you... If you want to get hired as a cop, first, of course, you got to find out what the qualifications are uh, that the agency you want to apply with. So you get their application, or you go online, and you see you're required to have these things. Now, some academies, some police departments will hire you without a police academy, and they will pay to send you to a police academy, pay you while you're in the academy. Then, when you graduate, they'll hire you. And you know, it's a if and or but coconut kind of thing because. You know, they put money into it, then if you get out and you put in your year, then you go somewhere else to make more money, and they invested that money. So a lot of your smaller agencies don't want to do that. And the agencies that do do that are big enough, like Sacramento Sheriff, they have their own police academy, and they send their own troops through there. Now, they'll hire other cops because California and most states have a standard for the state to be a cop. So if you meet those standards for the state, you know, academy, no felony conviction, whatever it is, then you can apply at any agency and they can hire you or not hire you. Um, California Highway Patrol, they do not hire cops. They only hire people that they can indoctrinate into their blind he-man theory of policing, which is horrible in my book. They're very, I mean, they're all about humiliation. They try to be like the military. They try to think that they're tough and they're bad and they brainwash. So they only hire young guys. And, I mean, a lot of young guys may, may take this offensively, but when you're younger, you're more easily influenced. You're more easily molded into what somebody wants. You more believe what you're told, which is why we got all these freaking college idiots running around thinking liberalism and socialism is great, because they were molded by a government liberal left system. So they think it's great because they don't know any better. Uh, you know, and I always say this, uh, something a young person can never say that an older person can say is older people can say, we were young once. We were where you were at many years ago. And a young person can never say that, but you know, they still think they know everything. But anyway, get in an academy. Most police academies and the military, they want young, impressionable guys or women that they can mold and program because it's easier to control them. When I was working for that crooked DA, uh, Jeff Rising, when he started hiring people, he was like, he flat out said it. And, he, and he's right. He goes, I ain't hiring any more old cops. They question too much. They don't want to follow orders. you got to explain too much. Uh, they think they know too much. They, you know, I have to justify everything. He goes, I don't want, he goes, from now on I'm hiring young guys only that they're not going to question me. I can hold over their head. They got their whole career in front of them. And if you cross me, I'll blackball you and you'll never get another job. Whereas an older guy that's been around and has got his retirement, he's got his experience, and he's like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be intimidated into this bullshit. I, you know, I, I can get my ch retirement check here in a year or so, or I can retire now, so you ain't getting me to do some bullshit. Well, guys in charge don't like that attitude. And government doesn't like that attitude, especially government doesn't like it from their enforcers, the cops, the ones, the military, the ones that are supposed to Blindly follow orders, like the SS. You know, you, you just don't question things. You do what you're told. It's legal because the government says it's legal. Therefore, you're not breaking the law. You're following orders, and you're doing nothing wrong. And we go back to the Milgram experiment. Guy puts on a white coat, acts like a lab technician, starts telling people to shock people, and the people are like, huh, he's the doctor. He's got the lab. I guess he knows what he's doing. And they're just shocking people and trying to kill him. And they're not stopping. And, and that's just human nature. But government has learned these things over time. And the last thing government wants is a bunch of old vets who are like, you've lost your freaking mind. I'm not going out and taking, I'm not violating the Constitution and going out there and taking guns. Because the older vets have been around for a while and they don't have as much to lose. If you get young, impressionable guys... They got their whole career in front of them. They don't want to get dirty. They don't want to get blackballed. They don't want to get that jacket that he's not a team player, doesn't follow orders, asks too many questions. Those are all things that police departments don't want. So I'm sure the public's going to be like, well, that's 
not good. No shit, it's not good. But that's the way it is. So when you're applying for a cop agency, you pretty much got to play the game. You got to be a yes man. You got to go in there, oh yeah, you know, I love all the races and I'm not racist. And I love all religions and I'm not, you know, uh, you know, I don't discriminate and I love gays and I think everything's great and wonderful and I write my own mother a ticket because it's the law and I'm going to follow the rules. I mean, it seems stupid, but they literally used to ask that question. If you pulled your mom over to write her ticket. And for a while, if you said no, they would disqualify you wouldn't get hired. Over time, people were like, that's stupid. Most people ain't going to write their mom a freaking ticket. That's dumb. So later, if you said you would write them, they'd go, oh, it's too stringent. Now we don't. So it changed within a matter of five or ten years on what the right answer was. So the right answer is always changing when you go through these oral boards. So to get hired, once you, once you figure out what agency you want to work for, you look up the qualifications, you try to meet as many qualifications you can, you try to exceed those qualifications. If it says I want a high school diploma, obviously you have your two-year degree, it's better. If you have your four-year degree, it's better. But a lot of times agencies don't want educated guys. They don't, you, they don't hire a lot of people with four-year degrees. And the reason they don't is because they're a little bit better at critical thinking. They can kind of see through the BS and go, man, this is some kind of ignorant policy. Why are we doing that? Because that's the way we do it, mister. Don't question. Be a team player. We don't need individuals coming here telling us how to do this. We've been doing this our whole country. The government's right. Don't question. So, guess what? You get dumbed down people that just follow orders. Because that's what your job is. I mean, people will be like, oh, new cops, they just follow orders. They don't think. There's a lot of cops that think, but you got to realize it's a job. It's no different than if you go to work for your boss and he says, we're doing it this way. And if every time your boss tells you something, you go, you know what, I don't think we ought to do this and that doesn't seem right and I'm not comfortable with it, you're not going to have a job long. So I don't know why people think cops somehow should just stand up against the world and throw away everything be, you know, because somebody kind of bends the rules a little bit or does something. Again, I don't think cops, I know none of the cops I've ever seen are out there planting evidence and doing shit because if they do it, they know I turn them in and, and I, you know, I, I haven't seen it. Either they didn't do it around me and they knew or, you know, it's just not that happening that much as everybody thinks it's happening. So once you get the qualifications, you fill out your application, you're going to have what's called an oral interview. And in this oral interview, there's usually two or three cops. And the cops that get to sit on these interviews are not cops like me. Believe me. <laughs> it's not going to be me going in there saying, hey, can you critically think? Would you question? Would you file blindly? Would you take the guy just because another guy takes I mean, you're not, that's not what they're going to get. The guys on the board are selected by the administration who are team players, who know what the department's looking for, and who are going to weed out the bad guys, and who knows that we need three black females and two Asian males and one black male, and uh, you know what, we only have one white slot, so be very selective on all the white guys, because we can only hire one of them. That's who's on your oral board. It's not like... Let's go in there and pick the best candidate. I mean, that's, if you believe that, then you're just crazy, because that's not the way it goes. So your oral board is set up in a way that they have now, and again, when the standards used to be high, a lot of the minorities couldn't get in there. Rick, that's racist. I don't give a shit what you call it racist as you want. I've learned long ago not to worry about names. It's not racist. A lot of minorities couldn't pass the standards, so they lowered the standards. A lot of women couldn't pass the physical standards, so they lowered the physical standard. I mean, it's just the way it is. If you're going to go out there and play social experiment and have a petri dish and try to rub all the races together and make them happy, you're going to have problems. You're going to have to lower the standard if you want everybody to meet it. Because if you don't, then you wouldn't have these quotas. You would just say, here's the standard. If you make it, you make it. Well, that's racist. Okay, whatever. I mean, it, that's the way it is. I, I love government when they want to try to impose this non-racist, bias, equal, we should all live together, let's bust black people to white neighborhoods and let's put white people in black schools and we're going to force this unity. Guess what happens in prison, first thing you do when you go in prison? You get separated by race. <gasps> Rick, that's racist. Our great government would never do that. Every prison is segregated by race. Blacks stay with the blacks, whites stay with the whites, Hispanics stay with the Hispanics, the Asians stay with the Asians. It's absolutely divided. 
and they stagger times from when they're out of yard, and they don't want them together, and there's issues. So, I mean, a prison is a liberal paradise anyway, because it's full of gun control, no weapons around, therefore everybody's safe and nobody gets hurt. Yeah, if you believe that, you're a liberal. Okay? You've got fences to protect you so nobody can come in. Well, there's a fence. That's kind of racist, Rick. You shouldn't have a fence. You're trying to keep people out. Okay, if you're a liberal, you're an idiot. Uh, and you have guards and police all around keeping you safe because government runs it. You've got a lot of rules, a lot of regulations. And guess what? You've got people divided by race. There's people getting stabbed, killed, and there's violence out of control. And somehow people think that if the whole country was run like a freaking prison, everybody would be safe. You're an idiot. So let me get back. I kind of digress here. I went from <laughs> being a cop to <laughs> prisons. So when you're on these oral boards, they're going to ask these questions, and they're testing your judgment and your, your how you're getting to the conclusion that you're getting to. The answer isn't quite as important as how you say you got there. Okay, guy that pulls a knife on you, what do you do? Well, I shoot him. Okay, why would you shoot him? Ah, you know I read that 21 feet says you can shoot somebody with a knife, so he's got a knife, I'd shoot him. That's not a good answer. They're going to think you, you can't think, you don't articulate. But, I mean, you haven't been a cop, you haven't been exposed to it. So the oral process to me is kind of a joke. Basically what it is, is they have to get the quotas in there that they want to get. They have to get the females and the blacks and everybody that they need to hire for the quotas. And then once they get the numbers, they try to pick the best one that they like that would fit with the least baggage, which would fit in more, which would be more of a team player. And then those are the ones that get hired and offered a job. And then they go through the cabin or whatever, and then they wash out in two or three years, or you know, they find out it's not what they wanted. And it, it's hiring cops is a big joke. I mean, I don't know any cop that stayed at one agency for the whole career. I mean, it's very, very rare for somebody to stay at one agency. Most cops are jumping from agency to, if they can. If they're in small rural areas where they can't change too much, then they'll stay there. But if you're in big city metropolitan areas where you have a lot of choices and a lot of agencies with different pay scales and benefits and take-home cars and free medical and free gym membership and, you know, you get paid four hours overtime to work out each week. And, uh, you know, when you start competing for extra people, you kind of get your pick of the draw because cops will leave and go to the best place that pays them the best benefits that they can get the most out of. So, um, you know, oral boards are one of those things that you just got to go in there. I, I kind of think honesty is the best policy, but in an oral board, I don't think it's the best policy. You have to go in there and tell them what they want to hear or you're not going to get the job. So, I mean, you could tell what kind of agency if you do the thing, if you look at the background. If you go to the web page and you see the picture of the agency and they have a female holding a dog and they have a black male as a lieutenant and they have a black sergeant and they have an Asian guy on a motorcycle. And then they have some white dude in there, just a token white guy in there. And then that's the department that they want to express upon the public. When you look at those pictures, go, go to any website right now and you'll probably see exactly what I'm saying. Go to any police website and look at their picture. they got to cover all the bases. The only thing most of them don't have is a midget. Uh, little people, whatever you want to call them. UC Davis, or Davis has one. <laughs> but most, most agencies don't have one of those. Davis, very liberal, they have one. Because that's a good quota for them. And then you got to have the, you know, the woman with the short haircut that looks like a dyke. Rick, just because a woman has short hair, I know it doesn't mean she's a dyke. But a lot of times if they look like that, they probably are. So anyway, uh, that's getting the, the process. And then after you pass your oral board, then you have to do the background. Then after the background, you have to usually do a lie detector. Then after the lie detector, you have to do your psych eval. And then after your psych eval, you go back for a final chief interview. And that's where he kind of goes over all the little things. And before you get in to see the chief, he knows whether he wants you or not. It's not, it's not like, well, let me go see the chief, see if I got the job. If the chief is seeing you, you probably got the job, unless you go in there and step on your dick, and then you don't have it. There's my probation YouTube timer. <laughs> so I must be at 15 minutes. I'll do the next one on uh, the lie detector. And then I'll do the next one on the Psyche Valve. Alright, so one we'll not there for the first one.